Uh, hey guys, this is Shred Kid here. I'm doing my first ever Dota 2 commentary. It's going to be uh, mostly on Invoker, actually entirely on Invoker. And uh, I got a friend commentating with me, so why don't you introduce yourself? Hey guys, this is Decency. Uh, a lot of you have probably seen me around Dota 2 subreddit. Uh, or the yeah. here in your subreddit before that. So I'm really looking forward to this with Shred Kid because I do not know Invoker very well, so I'm going to kind of serve as the bouncing wall to throw me some ideas yeah. out there. Okay, so uh, I guess I'll just do an intro to how the hero himself works. One, he's considered very powerful, and two, he's incredibly complicated in that there are a lot of different things you can do with him. So, the way he works is this. You have three spells, or three orbs, Quas, Wex, and Exhort, each of which gives you a stat bonus when you upgrade it, and uh, it's also going to serve to invoke an orb, which you have on yourself, and you can have any combination of these three orbs. And in the game Magicka, it's very similar battle. to this. You can invoke a spell based on what orbs you have, and then you get that spell. So, for example, if you have three orbs of Quas, as Invoker does right now, you get the spell Cold Snap. And uh, another thing that's important about this is that each spell or each orb, when equipped, has a particular attribute which it gives you. So, in this case, Quas is going to give Regen, um, and it'll upgrade your strength. Wex is going to give Agility, and it upgrades. Uh, or it upgrades your agility and it gives uh, attack speed and move speed. And Exhort gives you intelligence, and it's also going to upgrade your attack damage. So, um, I'm playing a Smurf number two this game. I picked this game especially because one, it was against a Doom and a Night Stalker, which are two common targets which people like to use to shut down Invoker. And uh, the other part or reason I picked it is because I don't think I play particularly well this game. So I think I can criticize what I do a lot of the time, and that will be a good learning experience. Uh, All right. So this simply is, because this is just a public game matchmaking. Yep, this is an AP game. Uh, I'm friends with the Tide Hunter. Uh, I think he goes by Melon Monkey. The uh, Windrunner, whose name is Tierra, and you guys might have seen him around, and the Axe, whose name is Roar Platypus. I don't know the Ricky, but I hit this guy like three times on ladder in a row, and he was pretty good. So. All right. The battle begin, gin, gin, gin. Anyway, we're laning Invoker mid this game. Um, he's solo laned every time you play him. He just has to solo lane. Um, he might have a support popping in and out or like pulling for him or something, but he's the most EXP dependent hero in the game. And uh, uh, he's also an incredibly powerful mid hero. We notice that we get Q first. Um, there are two schools of thought on what you level first. So you can level the Q or the E. Q gives you regen, look at that, it's 4 regen a second on him, which we'll get to why that's important later, whereas Exhort is going to give you plus 9 damage at level 1. So, what I like to do with the Q, and Demon how I approach used. a lot of lanes as an invoker, is just trade harass with people non-stop, and uh, that'll let you establish lane control later on when they burn their, through their regeneratives and you haven't. So you can just tank creeps non-stop and attack him. Uh, and that's kind of looks like what I'm doing in this game, I'm trying to focus mostly on harass early, because it's a good way that you can beat Night Stalker. You just force him out of lane. Right, that makes sense, because you have a lot of free regeneration, basically, with your Q. Until you level up different arms, it seems like. Yeah. Um, I'm going to talk about my starting items, I think. Sure. There are really two general starting builds that you're going to want to go. One is what I have, and it's what the recommended items are, and I think that's really good for a, a generic laning situation. That's going to become a Bracer later, which is also going to become a Django, or a, sorry, Drums. I'm probably just going to call it Django by accident all game. Fair enough. The uh, regen is for even more harass, but it doesn't look like I'm going to need it that much against the Balinar. So, right. again, if we look at him, he's already burned through two Tangos and is at half health. I'm going to start regening faster. Oh, I cold snap to trade harass. Because, okay. again, he did more damage than me that fight, but I don't really care about that because I'm going to heal up, so... Okay, so do you want to explain Cold Snap a bit? Okay, so Cold Snap is typically the first spell that you're going to want to invoke. You get Invoke, which is yeah. lets you get your actual spells at levels uh, 2, 7, 12, and 17. And each time it gets progressive better in terms of amount of mana cost. So, or not mana cost, sorry. It gets worse. But what Cold Snap does is it stuns him when the instant you cast it on him. And then every time he takes a certain amount of damage, he's going to get stunned again for a short duration. And the higher your ranking Q is, the better the stuns are. It's incredibly powerful in laning. Okay. So basically you can get, it looks like, three or four, maybe even more stuns off, just as long as you keep doing damage? 
Yeah, typically in with a rank two Q, you cast it, you get a hit, uh, you move up, get another hit, and then you get a third hit as he runs away. Okay. So it's three hits and the two stun durations, the three stun durations, and it's pretty good. Okay, this is I make a mistake here, so let's watch this. Okay, so that what happened that fight was I opened with Cold Snap. He had a double damage. Okay. And I know that my Tornado, which is another move, you have QWW gives you a Tornado. We'll see that a lot this game. Dispels runes, so I know that I can get rid of that rune on him. Okay, so... So what I'm thinking is... I'm gonna... Sorry? Tornado is a purge, then? Yes. Okay. Well, not exactly. It's weird. I honestly don't know exactly how the mechanics work, but it does dispel runes, which okay. is the main thing you use it for. Fair enough. Um... And it, yeah, and the mechanics have changed since the one to Dota 2 slightly. So, anyway, let's explain what happened in that fight because I haven't gotten into that. Sure. I know he's going to go on me, so I cold snap him. He's going to start smacking me, and what I want to do is immediately um, tornado him to get rid of the rune and then kill him. Unfortunately, I get worried when he silences me at a really good timing, and uh, I start thinking maybe I can't win this fight. And uh, if I was playing more aggressively, I would have gone for it, but if I die in this lane, the whole game is thrown off. Because the point of this lane is that I'm supposed to be dominating it, and if he gets a kill, everything's messed up, whereas if I get a kill, it's kind of just going how it should be, so that's right. why I played it safe there. Right, I also noticed you were tanking the creeps during that fight. You were a bit ahead in your creeps, so you were kind of at yeah. a disadvantage to begin with. Dyer's middle tower also, this player, I know this player Butters. Uh, I hit him on the ladder all the time. I guess we just play at the same time, and I know that he's pretty good, so... Okay. I was kind of worried about that. Maybe he'd pull something out. So, notice that I'm not controlling runes this game. Right. Or at least yet. It's because it's daytime, and I'm not really worried about NS getting a rune while it's daytime. And Voker doesn't really utilize runes that well at all. I mean, illusions are nice, and um, the double damage is nice. But the way I'm playing Invoker this game is going to be a more farm prioritized Invoker. So... If I leave lane and miss a couple creeps, I really don't want to do that. And uh, I will try to deny him runes, but right now I don't really need them. It's all the okay. same to me. So how would you recommend ever picking from bottle on Invoker then? No. I would never get a bottle on Invoker unless I was going a WE build, which is uh, completely different than what I'm doing this game. Okay. And in that case, I might not even get it all the time. Okay. Uh, with Q, you really don't need any uh, health regen, so I feel like it's a waste. Right, excellent, because you're already sitting at 7.5 regen per second, which is more than a ring of health to me. So. Yeah. Oh, which ones, uh, I want to tell Sehan's skilling. So, QW Invoker, Crosswax, is going to give you the most CC of any of the builds, and it's typically what's actually it's done what's done in almost every high level game. Simply because what we'll, we'll see later is the amount of CC coming up from Invoker is ridiculous, and W lets you move around really, really fast. So, okay, so you, um, you, I want to keep going. I was gonna say you're gonna ignore Berg Sword. Uh, for how long? Uh, for now. Okay. Um, I'm about to make another mistake here. So let's look at this. I see a DD rune, and I don't want to let him get that. So I go for it. He gets it. I tornado to try to get him off me, but I'm gonna die to a profit gang. Okay. Uh, you're a few seconds ahead of me. Devil damage. Okay, I'll, I'll pause for three seconds. Alright, so yeah, that was a good, Darkness good map awareness by Profit. And it was a pretty good play. Um, I didn't want to let him get that, because if he gets that, our Windrunner dies. Okay. Like, Windrunner just can't live. So, what I should have done was come in over before them. I thought I could beat him to the room, and I didn't. But, um, yeah, that was me playing a little bit too aggressively to try to protect someone. And he gets a kill for it. Sure. Also, you'll notice I invoke Ghost Walk, which is a spell which gives invisibility, but I didn't have the mana cost to use it, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very steep mana cost for 200 just for a... It's a, it's a really good invis. Yeah, it's a definitely. really good invis. Late game, you can use it to slow an entire team down. But, um... Anyway, we'll notice that I'm skilling. Uh, I have three in Wex and two in Quas right now. Um... If you can get away with it in lane, I always try to get two in Quas and then get like four to Wax because it gives a really, really good tornado. It makes the tornado range longer, which is what you really want for early ganking and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I'll mess over and, that. Uh, comes up. Yeah. I'm trying to use Invoke right now to get Ghost Walk off cooldown because you don't... Oh, let me talk, talk about how Invoke works before I talk about that. So you have two... Once you hit level seven, you have two spells at all times. 
Um, when you invoke a spell, um, that goes to the first slot, and then the one in the first slot moves to the second. So, you're always going to want to have a spell like Tornado up because it's so useful early, and it's like good for stopping people if they're running at you, or, uh, it's just really, really generically good. And Ghost Walk you don't want up because it's taking up a slot, and Invoke has a cooldown, so you don't want it being one of your spells. Um, I'm making a mistake in not getting that off right now. I think I'm focusing on CSing or whatever, but that's another mistake coming out for me. Okay. So right now your team's getting kind of crushed overall. We focused on Invoker, but the game's 5-0 in the Dire team's favor. Yeah. Uh, if we start Dyer's looking around the map, we're going to notice that it's the first nighttime, and NS and Profit together are crazy. Yes. Um, they can just kill anything on the map at any time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's a call coming out from a tide hunter. Please stop molesting me. I think he's been having a hard time at bot. But um, yeah, and Night Stalker anyway. already picked up his iron as well. So yeah. Okay. Oh, we're seeing some action going on right now. Uh, I'm trying to go into the S. Axmus is the top though, so it's just a little bit unfortunate. Cold snap tornado is a really good uh, early ganking YouTube up of bloody. It's what most QW. Most QW invokers like to use that to gank, and then they use the WWW, or the uh, EMP for team fighting, which burns everyone's mana so much and deals damage. Right, it seems like it would be especially strong against strength heroes who don't have much of a mana pool to begin with. Especially. Um, one of the th things that a uh, invoker is really good against is anti-mage. One, because of all his disables and stuff, but you can burn all of his mana. You tornado him and you drop the EMP right before you tornado and he'll lose all his mana. Now he can't run away. All of a sudden, he's mortal, so... Okay. Something that a lot of people will be interested in. And that's just a sort of timing thing, you'd say? To hit the EMP, or does the EMP go through tornado? Yeah, typically what you want to do... I think at the time, the EMP goes through tornado. So you want to drop the EMP first so that they can't run away from it, and then tornado after. Okay. And um, it'll burn everyone's mana. Excellent. Radiance top tower is under attack. And again, you'll notice I'm not ganking. I have not left mid, mid lane so far this game. Right. I think, yeah, at this point, I was considering leaving, but I didn't have a TP on me, so another mistake coming up from me. I don't want to gank as invoker this game, and I'll explain why. Um, I'm going towards my goal of getting level 17 and agonies up as fast as I possibly can. And yeah, and at this point, I really should be going to leave, but yeah, once you have 17 and agonies up, um... You, it's really hard to lose a game. The trick is getting there. So, we see me go into a fight, and as I'm running to it, I'm on all W, right? So I'll get there faster? Yes. Um, looks like I might get there in time, I don't know. I don't really remember, hang on. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna get there in time. I'll open with Colt and Snap, Tornado. And, oh! That's a really nice earn from him. So like I said, he's a pretty good player. Yeah, that was well timed, and he got out. So yeah, just you should have the courier bring your TP a bit earlier. Understandable. Yeah, I have. Two, I think I bought two now to make up for it. So <laughs> I'm on a, a lot of W for the tornado EMP, and I'm going towards a Django. The phase boots Django is um, with your W up, you move around the map so fast, and you have such high attack damage. It's so good. Um, the phase boots are great for the moving around and positioning spells, but the well, last hit damage is also so good in lane, and the uh, Django gives you stats that you really need, and also um, the movement speed attack speed is really, really good on him. I would say that these two items are cool for in almost every situation. Like, no matter what build you're going, it's really good to get both of them. Alright, I want to talk about your uh, level priorities right now. So you have four in Wex and two in Quas. Now, you got the Quas early, and you just kind of settled on that yeah. there, and because the Wex is more important, you feel? I feel like Wex is definitely more important in this game. Um, there's a Doombringer and an NS, who I can get rid of their mana with the NP. Um, I can also get rid of the Weaver, who's impossible to kill. I can get rid of his mana. Oh, looks like a kill attempt, but no Shackle. There wasn't a Shackle, so... Again, three heroes who, without mana, are fairly useless, so... Right, okay. So you want to make the NP basically your primary goal here? Yeah. I feel like if um, they try to push our towers with profit, one thing that um, he's really good at is stopping mid-game pushes. You drop an EMP and just tornado, and it's, oh, wait, we're not pushing anymore because we can't. So, something that he's really strong with. Radiance top tower okay. is under attack. So, with this roll, you'd anyway, say he's very good counter push. With this um, build, rather. 
It's hard to say because one of the ways that you beat Invoker is by pushing extremely early before he has those things up with like a Chen, Punk, and Lycan type combo. Okay. Lycan's a hero that's an extremely strong pusher. Oh, he's not ported yet, but... Mid-game pushes aren't as effective against him because you get the EMP up, so you want to push early. Okay. Nice Shackle dodge from Butters again. Great play. Yeah, and you're hammering away at this mid tower. It's already down to about a third, so... Radiance top tower sure is under attack. Yeah. Um... Okay, something that I think is important to note... Is that I'm not farming well this game. My last hits are not very good. My item timings are going to be much slower than they normally should be. Um, a good item timing for I think Phase Django is like nine to ten minutes, and I'm at thirteen minutes and haven't finished it yet. So uh, I, I have it in the bank, but I should have it on me. So okay. One of the things that you want to do when you're not farming that well as Invoker, and typically that's going to be because an enemy is pressuring you, not because you're missing last hits blatantly, is um, you can start to go gank and start going in team fights. Because if you're going to be a little weaker in the late game because either they're pressuring you or you're making a mistake, you might as well try to uh, make them get to the late game slower. Understandable, that makes sense. So. Now, when laning Invoker, you said he demands a solo, which is makes sense because he's very well independent. Now, typical, you see a dual lane and high level play a lot. Would you say he's strong against a dual lane in a solo mid role? Um, I would say no. Um, Invoker's biggest thing is that he can trade harass first one person, but against two people, he can't trade as much harass. So, if you want to put like a lich anti mage up against him or something, um, that would be pretty strong against him. Okay. Typically, though, when you're drafting and you know that they're going to try to duel against you, you just move the invoker to a different lane so that they can't do that. Like what a lot of Chinese play, or same, um, he gets through some games in BP now because there are some heroes which are really out of control in Dota 1 right now, like Lycan and Syllabear and Batrider, but um, what we'll see is maybe him soloing the hard lane because that team knows that there's, there's going to be a solo up there, so basically invoker will be against one person, like your team just makes it happen. Okay, that makes sense. And, as you said, he's not very rune-dependent, so he doesn't need the solo mid. No, he doesn't need a solo mid. Um, It's really good to do it in pubs, just because right. mid most pubs aren't going to say solo safe lane, but... Okay, so you pick up a drum here now, finally. Yeah, it took me long enough. <laughs> Typically, I like to get my four staff by 14 to 15 Dyer's minutes if I'm going that build. And I'm, I'll talk about item timings later, once we get more items in play, but... Uh, I'm about... Three minutes behind where I should be. Okay. Right? Or not three, like two minutes behind where I should be right now. Well, you just picked up a tower, so that'll hold out. Definitely. Okay, so it looks like we anyway. see some action happening bottom, or posturing at least. Yeah, um... Oh, looks like I'm actually going to try to go on Night Stalker, but no one's close enough, so... I kind of wasted a lot of mana there. Mm -hmm. Which is going to bring us to an important thing. This build gives you no mana regen. At all. Um, anyway, well, sometimes what I used to do Radiant's is uh, get a Yule's instead of 4 staff if I know I'm going to be running around a lot and don't want to use, uh, I want to have full mana because it gives such good regen in the stats. It's really good. But this game I have to go 4 staff, and we'll see why later. But I, not getting 4 staff isn't an option. So I yep. think I should ferry clarities out this, this game, but I, I don't want to do that because I'm already behind on farm, so I'm just going to try to farm without having any mana, which isn't really optimal at all. It's me trying to make the worst, best of a bad situation. Okay. Fairy and Clarity is out is a thing that I do a lot personally. I don't know how much other people do it that much, but um, when you're going this build, I might die here. You know? No, I'll be okay. Yeah, we were choosing not to die. Yeah, so, now you're back to the well, so seems like you can make your mana last quite some time, because you're not really too active in ganking. No, that's why um, Yules is really, really good for ganking, like I said, but 4 staff, if you're doing a ganking build and you get the 4 staff up fast, what that allows you to do, which we won't see this game, but what it allows you to do is tornado, uh, 4 staff yourself up to someone, then either ice wall, which I haven't got yet, I'll explain why, or um, and basically it lets you get next to them, and then you can just Dyer's unload all your stuff on them. Is under attack. Okay. I wanted to talk about my skill build. I don't have E yet, so that means a huge arsenal of my spells I don't have. And a lot of times you think, well, why? You want to get all your spells so that um, 
you can use whatever you want whenever you want. Well, here's the reason why I don't have the, um, Sunstrike's really weak early game, uh, or with one rank in eight. Um, Deafening Blast is okay, Meteor's really not good. The only thing you really want it for is the, um, Ice Wall, because all the other E-spells are really dependent on a high rank of E, except for maybe Deafening Blast. But, I don't have the cooldown on Invoke yet to use the spells. My cooldown on Invoke should be 17 seconds right now. Yeah, it's 17. And, um, you can't cycle through spells that fast, you just can't do it. So, you have like a Tornado, EMP, Cold Snap, and then maybe, um, that's most of a fight right there. Like, you have to wait 17 seconds before you get another spell after those three, and that's... it's a lot. Right, and then the only spell so I'm, left... I'm prioritizing the spells I have. Okay, so... Yeah, and the only spell left that is Ghost that. Off. Right. Or, well, you, you can Tornado again, typically, by that, but... Okay, so yeah, in that fight we just saw you actually burn all of Kyrion's mana, and he just had to bet. Alright, so you're going on Night Stalker here, with Tornado hits, the EMP hits. And Night Stalker is down to mana. And now Ball. That was a pretty well coordinating guy. Radiance middle tower yeah. is under attack. And then I'll skip right through that pause. Glad it does that. Um Looks like Weaver I think that we should kill Weaver right here. Radiance Hang on. I think Ricky some, does something good, or Windrunner does. <laughs> but Radiance middle anyway, yeah, he's just gonna get shot and die. Bottom tower oh, my tornado him in invis. A tornado doesn't take people out of invis, by the way. It doesn't do that. Okay. If you can but see me, you're already dead. It looks like they're gonna take our first tower. And tower this is the point at which I'm gonna be starting concerned about Radiance team fights and more importantly, Doombringer. Because if I get doomed in a team fight, we lose the team fight. Okay. Um. So this is one of the reasons why. Oh, I'll talk about that later, but the reason why I like to get four staff against the Balinar is because you have to get in the middle of the fight to use a lot of your spells, like Tornado, or not Tornado, like uh, Ice Wall. So you get in, but then he silences and slows you, and you four staff your way back out, and then he can't hit you. Okay, I was actually assuming... It's not assuming quite as good against Doombringer, but... I was actually assuming you were getting the four staff for uh, Furion, or Nature's Prophet, that is. It's also oh, good it's good against him, him too. It's good against VS because VS is um, a positional hero, so you can you know save yourself if you get swapped. A little bit of BM coming out from more Platypus right there, <laughs> but okay. Um, the reason I got Point Booster before I four staff this game, which is something I rarely do, is because Doom. Um, I'm really really worried about getting doomed, and I think maybe if I get the Point Booster up first, I can survive a Doom and then uh, try to turn the fight around and let everybody get away with Tornado and stuff. Okay. Yeah. But Stats on point booster are exceptionally good. Okay, so looks like it's fight's happening mid here. We're gonna heal the EMP. EMP and actually that's, doesn't land. That's a mistake that I made. Um, I think at the time this game was played, the EMP range was still half of what it should have been. But um, typically you really should drop the EMP first because that can happen. Okay. Anyway, uh, saw a leveling thing, which I think is really important. I get the E before level 12, and level 12 is when you get your next rank of Invoke. So, um, I want the E before then, because now I can start throwing down Ice Walls more often. Right. Which I think is pretty important, and I can start using Alacrity if I need to, which is makes you attack really fast and with more damage, or anybody really. You can cast it on it, even Catapults. So I want to get that stuff up. Right, and it's the Ice Wall is only the damage actually gets boosted from having levels in Exor, so... You don't really care too yeah. much about that. Yeah, um, you don't, it doesn't matter, you just want the ranks in the queue for that. Which is why I level Q up to 4. A lot of people will leave it at 2 or 3, but I like it at 4 because of Ice Wall and Cold Snap, mostly. Okay. Anyway, um, I think right now I'm telling my team that I don't want to fight because it's nighttime, and I think Doom's around somewhere, so I'm saying let's just farm, I wanna... I'm trying to get to my goal of 17 eggs in this game. Um, it's an overriding theme throughout all my Invoker games. Oh, Fear looks like Ricky's getting magic. jumped on. Fear quiets magic, and the grand. He's gonna go down. I tried to save him with the tornado, but it's not enough. And it looks like Max wants to fight 45. Oh yeah, I was yelling at him in vent during this. I was saying, "Don't fight! I don't fight." They fought. <laughs> I think I think this one can really badly. Yeah, he's gonna go down. This is a three for one. And again, gone. Looks like they almost picked off Night Stalker, but as you were saying, it's nighttime and chasing him down is a bit difficult. 
Yeah, um... I had no mana for that fight again, which is a problem with this build. I have no mana reach him, and I haven't been using my spells all that efficiently this game. I've been missing with some. So, mm -hmm. some pretty suboptimal play. Uh, Wind Runner's gonna go down. Not a whole lot I can do about that, so... I'm just trying to defend this tower with Tornado MP right now. Right. And the cooldown on uh, EMP isn't actually too bad, it's only 25 seconds, so... No, not at all. Yeah, it looks like Nature's Prophet's gonna go down here for sure. Yes. Yup, no. yup. Nope. Let's take a look at the scores here. You're, you're sitting on 1-1 one, one with 4 assists. Certainly not bad, but definitely not an active solo med. No, not at all. This is completely passive. And I'm, I'm just worried about counter ganks from the Prophet, the NS, and the um, Doombringer, so... Right. Like I said, I don't want to play aggressive this game. And if we get to the late game, Invoker out carries their entire team. Okay. Um, it doesn't seem like he would, but he may Balinar is useless. Uh, you can manhandle Doom, or you should. Um, and we'll get to why that works that way later. Weaver isn't a great late carry, and I see that Furion is going right click build, and I'm fine with that because I have Deafening Blast, so I can stop him from attacking and all sorts of crazy stuff. So. Right. Okay. And so. Now, you, you're talking about rushing the Aghanoms quite a bit. Do you want to explain what that does for Invoker? Oh, absolutely. Um, Aghanoms, for one, it gives you awesome stats. Um, it reduces, or removes the mana cost on... Oh, nice Shackle from Windrunner. It removes Devil the mana cost damage. for Invoke, which is nice. But it brings it down from a 5 second, your ult from a 5 second cooldown into a 2 second cooldown. Okay. Which is huge. Um, I can't even begin to say how big that is. You can start throwing down all your spells non-stop in fights, um, and all of a sudden, you can control, like, you can 2 3 5 entire teams. Like, if there's someone there who's just dealing damage, and you're hitting all your spells, you can just control an entire team with your spells. It's absurd. Right. Um, he's completely out of control once he gets to that point in the game. Right, it seems like at this point you're kind of spell-limited, but at that point you're more cooldown limited than anything else. Yeah, like, you'll cycle through all your spells and go, oh wait, I haven't got this up again, so... At which point you just right-click people, because you right-click pretty fiercely with your, uh, Django, um, if you're on all W and maybe a lacrity, you right-click really hard, and it's the reason why a lot of people like playing them as a right-click carry with the WE build. Okay. And would you say... Now, I look at alacrity, and the first thing I think is, put that in an anti-mage or something, and that would be insane. Oh, absolutely. It's really, really good. Um, a lot of times if you have a really early carry who needs attack speed, um, you can actually get the early rank in eight, like, or much earlier than I did, just so that you can have that. And it's, it's awesome. Um, I don't know the exact, the stats, but I think it's, like, plus 100 to 150 damage, and, like, close to, like, one and a half times attack speed when you're really high ranked on it. Yep, you can actually, uh, if you select the invoker, you can click that question mark above the ultimate and actually take a look at his spells. Oh, wow, I didn't even know that was there. Cool. Yep. So, yeah, you can see it's, even at a low level, it can be a low level e exhort, that is, it can be up to 80% attack speed. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of attack speed, to say the least. So, again, this is a kind of boring game right now. Um, Radiant's so, top tower if you guys want to skip to uh, where it gets interesting, I'm level 15, so it's going to happen pretty soon. I mean... My standard timing for my four staff point uh, ags is going to be like twenty nine minutes because I try to make it coincide with my um level seventeen, which always happens around then. So I'm a little behind this game, but I'm trying to make it happen. Okay. And it looks like Weaver wants to one v one you. X has finally picked up his blank dagger, so oh, he misses the taunt. Yeah. Um. Oh, let me talk about other items you can get on him. If we see I want to force staff this game because the way I approach this hero is whatever items I get, I try to make coincide with getting an ag stick after that and then the 17, right? So in this game I know I wasn't farming well, I was chancing poorly, so I got the force staff because it's cheap. I could have gotten the Yule Wolves, which is more expensive. Um if I was farming better and if I was farming really well, I would have gone for a silent stick. Okay. Um I've had games where it's just, you know, every CS and it turns out with I'll get a Gwinsu first even. But I'm gonna try to defend this tower. TPN looks like we should win this fight by a lot. It's gonna, whoop, good swap by CS. And your tornado, deadly. 
So we're gonna get two, and yeah, we're gonna get uh, VS also. And, uh, oh, something that's important to note, I'm not trying to let Ricky take these kills. I make a mistake in missing them. Um, right now my farm is more important than his, he's got his defuse a lot and his going for BKB, but it's more important that I get my stuff up, so... The fact that I'm missing kills isn't a decision, it's a mistake. Okay. And, of course, it's a public game, so... You can't always coordinate that the way you like to. Nope. Generation. Um... Well, notice that I haven't really been doing this game at all. I haven't had any problems with the, uh... The, their silences on that team, so... Fear, what this means magic. is that I'm feeling very safe in my build right now. I feel like I can, um, maybe... Well, what I'm gonna want to do against the Doombringer is Dagger, and I'm thinking that maybe I can skip that and go straight for Hex right now. Um, that's, uh, that's mostly what I'm thinking of right now, but we're gonna see that he's gonna start focusing me once I get that 17 eggs, and then I have to adjust my build. Okay, so you're thinking really like game at this point. I mean, it's been established that we're making it to the 17 eggs, which means we should win. We shouldn't lose at this point. But my focus is going to be what happens if they get, if I get doomed and their profit is really right clicky, what do I do from there? Okay. Because right now I'm not really that concerned with the pressing game because it's so turtly. I'm looking 10 minutes ahead. Okay, fair enough. And it looks like Weaver's going a crystalless build. Crit build yeah, so, so we have a lot of right click coming out from them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Which means... uh. I don't know if I've said this about uh, deafening blast. That's going to be a real important one this game. Um, it stops people from seconds and it stuns for like 1.7. Or it's a knockback, but it deals a lot of damage too. Yep. It's very good. Looks like it disarms for up to 4 seconds at max level. Which, that's quite lengthy. And that team fight could be yeah. over by then. So, um, you'll notice that I... Let me talk about my skill build. I am in 454 four right now. I got the Wex up to 5 because I like it at 5. I don't really like it under 5 at any point. Um, I just feel like the move speed and EMP is worth it. But I've started to level Exhort almost exclusively. And this is because I need to get my damage spells up. Like um, my sun, not Sunstrike really, but my Meteor is really important. Uh, VS is going to suicide right here. Okay. Well, let me talk about this fight, because I'm making another mistake right now. I want to go in. Um, I think I should have gone in, but I was really, really worried about the NS Nighttime and Silence, because I remembered it hadn't been night for a while. So, and I always thought that fear on my TP, and all of a sudden I get silenced and killed, so that's why I didn't go in. Turns out it would have worked out. Whatever. Right. Okay. So... See the four step. Four step up, but I'm making another mistake. I'm not on all wax right now. I should be on all wax to run faster, and I wasn't. Right now, I should invoke Sunstrike. Er, that's on cooldown. But I should invoke Sunstrike when I can, so that I can Sunstrike him for the kill. And I don't. I just completely skip it, which is another mistake for me. Like I said, I picked out a bad game, so that I could um, point out my mistakes as opposed to a good game, which I point out what I do well, and then I feel like a pretentious jerk. So. Okay. Yeah. So it's always easier to call it mistakes than it is to phrase. So... Hopefully this is so, helpful. yeah. Being on Wex all the time is really good when you're in full region. I haven't really stated that, but Wex is really good. And right now I'm on the Tornado uh, setup. I should just be on all Wex. But that's a time to Dyer's middle tower mm -hmm. um, Something about Invoker is that there are so many little things which you can be doing at all points that it's really, really hard to optimize. Like, even if you watch someone like Ferrari 420, who's probably the best Invoker player in the world, you watch him play, you'll see him make mistakes like that occasionally. It's just, he's so hard to optimize. Definitely. And that high skill ceiling is what makes him terrible at some times by some players and amazing at others. That's great to see, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I think it's good to game design to have heroes like that, but it's just, you know, my own two cents. Anyway, I should have Ags up. I am 17 now, but I don't want to fight. I tell my team, just like, stay on our side of the map, guys. We're going to turtle. So I'm going to get Ags up, and it's about to get exciting. I'm about three to four minutes late on where I should be, but that's okay. Anyway, we got team fight going on top. It looks like we'll be all okay. Yeah, Ricky's just going to waltz out of there, and Winner is fine. Yeah, he picked off two kills, so. And it looks like you should have your Aganoms finished. Yep. On the court. And I think we're going to see... A drastic. I hope we will, because I don't want to show you a game where I get 17 acts and don't fight. But we should see a drastic change at this point, and I should start fighting nonstop. Okay. So yeah, I'm running over there right now. I want to fight. Uh, the tornado EMP is on cooldown. This is 
Again, Doombringer. Jury's gonna go down. I'll play it. I do my work at the cutting edge. Yeah, Rikimaru with BKB up. Yeah, that's excellent. That means uh, Night Stalker is not an issue anymore. Mm -hmm. So, we're gonna take a look at the gold draft. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there it is. I'm gonna explain why the gold graph's wrong. Um, okay. Or misleading. It's because factually it's right. It's misleading because all this game, we, I was letting ourselves get. Oh, I'm gonna force stuff up, looking for people. Double damage! I run around behind. Oh, there's the weaver, but we can't get him. Anyway, this whole game strategy was give the farm to Invoker so that once he has it, you just win. So I was sacrificing team fights in order to win team fights later, which is why even if our gold graph is losing, we were winning the game at the time because now we're an advantage to do very well. Okay. Uh, bad Angie goes down. I should Ice Fall here, hopefully. Ice Fall is okay. Yep. Cold Snap. Hopefully I definitely block a Meteor or something. Okay, there's a Meteor, but it was a little bit late, and I definitely blast before the break. So it's kind of a poor team fight. <laughs> but at the same time, you have to acknowledge that through that fight, you cast six or seven spells, it seemed like, out of a possible ten, so... Definitely. Oh, I tried to sunstrike him, I missed by just a little bit. Oh, I didn't see that one. <laughs> but, um, anyway, something that you should always do once you have the 17 axe up is have your Forge Spirits out at all times. So you take them out, and then you get that spell off your list as soon as you possibly can. And it's really easy to do, and they, what they do is they actually shred your armor. So every time that they hit something, they take its armor down by one, up to minus ten. And, uh... That's really, really good against people like a Doombringer, who naturally his base armor is like what? Zero. Two? No, it's literally zero. Or it's, it's zero. Right now it's two, but it's zero at the beginning of the game. He's gotten in a lot of armor since, but mm -hmm. it's really good against people like that. Okay. Anyway. Now, would you use them to, to jungle or just at the when you anticipate a team fight coming up? I always have them out at all times. Okay. If I don't have them out, it's not a decision to not have them out, it's me being absent minded. Mm hmm. Person, oh. very happy. I told him that he had to buy a gem and he was like, you know, I don't want a gem. I can uh, I can just find where he is and call. And I was like, dude, get a gem. So he was upset about that. <laughs> okay, and it looks like uh, Night Stalker is also... I check there. Roche with Sun Strike, which is a fairly good utility of that. And save Windrunner, even though she didn't really need saving. Well, let's see what spells I have up. I have Tornado up and... Uh, I should have another. Sp I should have ice. Ball. Like at this point in the game, I really like to have ice ball tornado. Uh, so you tornado, throw yourself in, angle ice ball right, and then on. Uh, they're all slowed. At which point you go to work. Here we go. This is where the fight starts. All right. So let's take a look. Three spells here. Three spells first. I'm going in. I'm gonna ice ball, and then I get. Here. And this is where my item path changes for the game because we're gonna lose this fight now by a lot. <laughs> We just lost two people because I let myself have that happen to me. So, here's how I approach Doombringer, or how I like to approach Doombringer as Invoker. I really like dagger against him because in this case, where I'll force staff myself in and then lay down the ice wall, which is I, I should have mentioned how good ice wall is. It's absurd. It's one of the best disciples in the game. The slow is just I, I don't. Let me take a look at the percentage. Well, I was looking at it. It doesn't quite make sense to me, because it goes over 100% slow, which just doesn't quite make sense. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of slow, to say the least. Oh, they're gonna get hurt. Um, I'm trying to deal some damage right now. I should get a deafening blast up. I don't. I invoked a spell that I already had on cooldown, so... Again, what I should have done there was, um... Immediately deafening blast in media when they're lined up in a perfect line like that. That would have been a double kill, and instead we only got one. Mm -hmm. okay. But anyway, back to the dagger issue. Um, what I want to do is um, throw down... This is sounds like theorycraft, but it does work, I promise. I want to throw down my um, Tornado MP, um, invoke, then I get want to get my... Excuse me. Deafening Blast and Ice Wall up. So I Deafening Blast right when he comes out of it. Dagger in, drop the Ice Wall, and force Staff out. And all of a sudden... I'm safe because in that window of which in which Deafening Blast disables the Doombringer, I can get out. Okay. And um, at that point, I cast my stuff from afar. Like um, 
my alacrity and cold snap and stuff can all be cast from far away, and spirits, I don't need to be there for them, so it works really well. Okay. And you're actually gonna pick up the zoom here, it looks like, so. Yeah. I feel like you can probably push it a couple of towers bottom right now. Yeah. Um... I think that's what we should do. We might end up retreating, but... Yeah, it looks like Rick and I are two feet back to the wall, so... Yeah, without a Ricky, I don't want to do this. So, we're going to just back up and go back to farming. So, I'm not sure if this is my first Django or my second Django. Um, oh, if it was, then I've, been using, then I've been using my charges fairly poorly this game. Or a lot of times when I should have used them, which I didn't. I didn't. So you feel it's usually worth upgrading as soon as you run out of charges? Depends on your farm. Um, if you're farming poorly, no. But, um, again, tags. But if you're farming really, really well, um, you can get another one. And the rationale is each charge is worth 200. If a charge will let you get a kill that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise, it's worth it. That's the way I like to think of it. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And it looks like you do pick it's up like, that It's like smoke. Now. Yeah, I'm going to get a dagger. Um, right here we're going to see me doing something which looks like a mistake, but I was actually really, really happy with it. We see me run in, get you, and then run away immediately. Um, I, I think Ty didn't get the memo on this, but what I was saying was um, I'm going to bait out a Doom, then get out immediately, so in the next team fight, I don't even have to worry about it. Okay. And that's what looks like happening. And it looks like we're on the run now, so let's see if we get away. Tornado first, Ice Wall second, Fury TP's in, I'm going to four staff away. Should definitely blast here. I'm me here, that works too. Then the blast. Uh, I'm trying to block him with my body, but I kind of miss. Uh, at this point, a lot of my good spells are on cooldown. I get the courier, I get a kill. Perfect. Um, I try to tornado for a triple, or a double, but it doesn't happen. And then Weaver securing away, but I think I... Yeah, I get the sun strike on him. Excellent. Just well done. And it looks like Doom's the only one left. So yeah, that team fight really went well. Yeah. They overextended. I don't think I did use a jungle last fight. Don't <laughs> yeah, they overextended by a lot. That was that was a fairly large mistake. Mm -hmm. And as you said, the doom you baited out the doom, so there was no chance of doom even going on you in that fight and crippling you. Yeah, that was that was the plan there. It just didn't get executed perfectly before because we had tide going in a little too far. Forge spirits up. I should use them to farm or sc like you use them to farm. You use them to scout. They're just really good in general. Mm -hmm. A lot of WV builds are built around the uh, spirits themselves. Uh, you get the one and Q and the bunch in A, and then uh, you just have them like push towers and kill people and stuff. Right, it's a pretty good build. I, I really prefer the QW. I was looking at uh, Alacrity also, and that you can cast it on the siege group. I noticed, so. Oh yeah. Um, is that used? The only time I remember when that was introduced, it was at a time when Invoca was even more out of control than he is now. Cold Snap was better, and it worked with Older Venom, so, like, he was absurd. But, um, anyway, that, he was buffed in this patch. Like, some stuff was nerfed, but that was buffed. And there was all this theory crafting going on of, oh, well, if you're trying to push your tier 3 racks, but you don't want to go into the high ground, you just cast it on the siege creep. And, um, turns out it doesn't really work that well, but it was a, it was a cool idea for my struggle. Okay. Oh, I forced staff up, and we was gonna go down. Yeah, Radiant's and now you're free to push again. Has fallen. Or we'll see if you back up again. <laughs> I don't it? know. I, I don't remember this game that well. Um, uh, we're gonna back out with one hundred TPing out. We're gonna back out, I think. And to be fair, there's no real reason for you to push because you do have a late game. I feel like anyway. Yeah. Uh, I should hit a sun strike here. Hopefully, oh no, I get him with the tornado. The tornado. EMP. Uh, I'm gonna get to the Terrible meteor. That was awful. And then I uh, push him back and try to save the tide hunter. Middle tower. I don't think he's gonna live, so that was a success. Yeah, you get two kills, so not a bad fight. And what's your move speed right now? You're sitting on 418 move speed with three wex up. And, and I'm not even phased right now. Right. <laughs> uh, I think with four wex, 
phase boots in Django, you're 452 when you're phased. 472 right now when you're phased, so... Yeah, that's the... Dog. <laughs> Two more... Three more ranks. Near permanent haze green. Yeah, it's... it's He's a silly hero. Um, I'm gonna want to shoot for sheep stick right now, I think. I'm thinking... I would have gone for the silence um, if Weaver was a problem, but he's not, so I'm just going to go for Sheep because I think Furion's going to get kind of out of control. If we look at his items, which we really haven't this game, and I wanted to talk about this, but I didn't. Where is he? There we go. Um, He's going full right-click. He has the MKB Ag Shadow Blooper. He's probably going to get like a crit stick out or like a, you know, typical right-click theory. Of the One of the reasons why I felt so safe in Turtle in this game and farming is because he wasn't ganking. Had he been ganking me, I couldn't have done this because of Menace and him. I wouldn't have felt safe at all, so I would have had to gank myself. But because he was going late game, and I know that fear in late game is easily controlled, um, it, I, I felt safe for farming. Right, he is sitting like, on I, I, 480 gold per minute right now, but doesn't seem like he's done too much with it. No, I don't think... This is a complete another topic, but I don't think this is the right play, way to play fear on. Anyway, um, that aside... We see we finish a hex out from Runner, which is going to be important from um, disabling key silencers against me mostly, so that I can have a little more freedom to move around in team fights. Yep, looks like you're going on the fear end here, but he's got both ours, so, uh shadow blade that is. He's just going to walk out. So now, it, if you pick up a sheep. What exactly are you getting rid of here? What's your first priority item to draw? Um, I would get rid of nothing. I would get BOT in this situation. Right, I forget. When you go dagger with this, the core item stuff, the phase, Django, um, Ag's force, or Yules or whatever, I actually prefer to go BOT first okay. so that you don't drop anything. Cause I don't really like dropping any of those items. And with BOT, the move speed is going to be insane. <laughs> yeah. To say the least, you're, you're practically like Weaver, and with the Dagger four Staff, you're wherever you want to be on the map at any point. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you are sitting on 3200 here, so we'll see what you pick up at some point. It should be it should be a DLT, definitely. Um, what else happened? I talked about this game. MP Ice Wall, Ghost Walk. I haven't had to Ghost Walk at all this game. I've used it like twice. Right. Now, I, I usually see people just holding them in reserve to to get away. Would you say that's Shouldn't, the common usage? You should never hold it in reserve unless you're really, really expecting a smoke gank with dust. Like, um, for example, if you're leaning mid, or very early, one of the times you might build differently is if you're against a coordinated team who wants to control Invoker. You get the W at level 3 so that you have Ghost Walk up, and you know that they're going to smoke gank you with the dust, so... uh. You might, or without the dust, because you want to check your inventories. But um, you want that in control then, so you don't get chain CC'd in some situations. And if they're all missing and you're expecting them to go on you, you can have it. Also, when you're um really like game like this with 17 eggs, um, it doesn't really matter if it's up if you're like expecting to get ganked because you can just use it. But with the dagger four staff, I'm not really worried about getting ganked at this point at all. Right, that's understandable. Especially you could just pop three W's and have. Speed, so. Yeah. All right. Looks like they're going to max. He's gonna fall. Oh, I'm about to make almost a game-changing mistake right there. I thought they didn't have vision off the high ground, and they did. So I was standing there. I was getting ready to line up my own. I ghost or I swallowed the ramp so that when they run up, but they're slowed. I had meteor EMP up. Um, or I was gonna have it up, and that would have just killed their entire team. Hang on, we're trying to escape. Let me, let me talk about this. A uh, tornado is going to slow them down. We should all get away, but NS is really fast. Yeah, you do it fully, that, but good check of the window. Okay. Nighty. Yeah, he does not move fast, but um, someone's going to get Furion. I'm just trying to book it out. Um, I kind of want to fight at this point, but I think that my right spells aren't up, so I'm kind of worried about that. Mm -hmm. Here's. Yep, I'm gonna make another mistake. I should meteor immediately. I don't. I should sun strike right then. I don't. A sun strike is a split second too late. And you haven't talked about sun strike yet, but it's a global nuke with a two or one point seven second delay, I believe. Mm -hmm. I might be wrong. Yeah, and one but thing it's that was about interesting to me was the damage split between all the targets. 
So absolutely. So it's used for really taking down fleeing heroes as opposed to like uh, farming or whatever. A lot of times you can use it to scout, like if you're sort of like a clock missile, but it's really not good and it's only good like game ones you have the cooldown for it. Okay. You can like uh, spawn strike where you think they're gonna run by, and maybe you'll get lucky and find them, but it's hard to do. You'll notice I'm maxing out um, E and W at this point. Actually, I'm all equal, but the E and W I was getting up high because that's where my damage is going to come from, and they have more damage dealers than us, so I kind of need to take up that roll. Mercury's going to go a little bit too deep right there, but he is going to get the tower, which is nice. But anyway, like I said, that team fight before with the ice wall, them running up a ramp in single file is going to be the best way for us to kill them. Um, the tornado EMP, or the Blast Meteor will just kill all of them, and I thought they didn't have vision, and they did, so that's why that fight went so badly. Right, so looks like they just had dropped a sentry ward prior to the fight. So, just bad luck, really. Yeah. Alright, so you're sitting on 4700s here, so you might even have enough to die, buy back, buy BOT, and be right back in fight. That's actually what the plan was at this point. Um, ice wall up, I'm probably gonna get doomed. Yup. I should have daggered in then ice wall. I did it backwards and that was my mistake. So dagger four staff, but that's my theory crap not working in real life. Uh, most of the time it does, but I made a mistake there. <laughs> and yeah, they do have quite a bit of right click damage. You saw effects how fast axe melted right there. This is like the first time I've used Ghost Walk all game. Um I think yeah, I think I get an in uh Sunstrike kill right here. Or I get some kill. Yeah, I get the Weaver, but... Or the... Yeah, it was the Weaver, but that's it. And I shouldn't have got to, so... Okay, so... One thing we haven't talked about is the... Um, how does Meteor actually work? No. Well, it has points in the W and E. It's one W, two E's. Um, so, the W's tell you how far it's going. Let me just make sure I'm not completely messing this up. I want to look at the tooltip. The W's um, are going to tell you how far it rolls. So, the travel distance is based off of W. Uh, and the damage is based completely off of the sword. Oh, yeah, okay. Stop. And um, it also has a dot. I believe. Okay, so it's going to hurt a lot. Basically, anyone it hits or rolls through is going to take damage from that. Yeah, it looks like, um, that it, for each, it takes every half a second. The burn time is three, so, um, I think that's, I've never done the math on this, I just know it's a huge amount, because that would be six times, like, 145. They're in it for the full duration. It's close to, like, 800 to 1,000 damage, I think. My math might be completely wrong for that. I just know it's a lot. Yeah, that sounds about right. And then plus the DOT as well, so. Definitely. And, yep, it looks like I'm going to get travels at this point. Um... Nothing too exciting going on here. We're seeing most of uh, the late game invoker utility. I explained why item decisions were made. Um, I could have gone for bigger stuff, but I didn't. And I explained what the spells do and the order in which to invoke them and have them up, I think. So, is there anything else you think I should cover? Yeah. Um, I feel like you've gone over all the spells, but really, team fights is the big part where I feel yeah. players have issues with Invoker because it's so complicated to get it through. And, like, you you obviously know them quite well, but for me, I've only played Invoker a couple of times, so just cycling through the spells very quickly like you do is a big challenge. Yeah, I would recommend for anyone learning Invoker, um, they get a practice game, um, get your late game-ish items. Like, uh, just get a bunch, like, Ags, Force Staff, Gwinsu, Face Boots, and just run around the map killing stuff for an hour, like, um, just so that your spells feel like second nature. Um, because once you mess up a spell in your chain of, uh, invoking them, you have to wait another two seconds for a spell, and then the time has passed in which it'll be really good. Like, the meteor position has shifted, and you can't get it anymore. It's stuff like that, so it's really important to know the how to use, like, the back of your hand and be able to fire off the spells when they need to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're getting to the point in the game where it's only going to be one or two more team fights. It looks like there's another... Four to five minutes, so. Yeah, I don't. Again, we've seen you make two mistakes in a row with the getting doomed. Um, there is a reason why Doombringer is considered a good counter to him, and if I was playing better this game, it wouldn't be an issue, but my mobility is a little lacking in what it should be, so. Okay, 
So despite that, you're still sitting on 7, 1, and 14. So, 235 CS, level 23. And yeah, CS should, like, with farming as much, it should be around 300 at this point, and that's too much on Grim Invoker. So, me missing CS. Uh, this is going to be a bad fight, I think. If I remember correctly. They are all right here, but they don't really have the initiative, the big jump in the initiative that you guys do, so we'll see how this goes. There goes so we get the EM. So I'm just ready to go on them, but I get sheep and killed by Prophet immediately. I buy back and I should BOT in, but there's no place to BOT too, so... Oh wow. I got killed in like three hits. Right. Um, how much damage is Prophet dealing for right quick? I can't find him on the map. Prophet is there we go. About He's doing like almost 400 a, a hit. Top tower is under attack. He's got a lot of stuff going on right now. But while they did pick off you, you also did pick off the Weaver Jr. And your axe had a really good call there, so... And you did get away from him. Yeah, if you notice, um, when Radiant's they were all lined up like that, that's when Invoker attack. shines. You saw the deafening blast deal damage and I was getting ready to Meteor and Ice Wall. Oh, well, something that's really important about I Ice Wall is that water. you want to angle your body. People don't think of it as like a skill that's hard to use, but if you angle your body just right, um, like in that one, I would have angled it so that the, um, it's running parallel to the sides of that ramp, so that they cannot get it. Like, there is no place they can run to get out of that. And Ice Wall lasts forever. They, that's an automatic one to invite if I can get that down, but I didn't, so. Um, the positioning Ice Wall is really important. I definitely want to save Tide Hunter here, but it's not going to be enough. I should QQQ him, or, uh, whatever it is, the stun. Cold Snap, yes. I, uh, I actually don't think of the skills by their names, I think of them as the finger position, because I've had to hit it so many times, you know? Okay, that's interesting. Now, what what hotkeys do you use for casting your two spells? Um, actually, so, in Dota 1, they had a list of set keys where each, there was a key that corresponded to every spell, so like, W was Cold Snap, X was Tornado, C was EMP, etc. Oh, okay. Um, but, in Dota 2, what they have is D is the first key, the one that you just invoked, and uh, F is the second one. So I've been using them. I'm going to switch back to the Dota 1 hotkey simply because it's confusing to have Tornado. Like, if you have Tornado EMP up early game, um, you might have to have Tornado second just by how, because how the nature of invoke works. So normally I want to initiate, I want to go DF for like Tornado EMP, but I might have it backwards and it might be FD, and all of a sudden I'm thinking, what just happened? So. I, I hope that developing from okay. that soon. so legacy keys. Yeah, that's understandable. Yeah, you're about to hit level 25 here. Um, you didn't get that top rack, so I think you definitely had a chance to, but it looked like the fight took priority there. Yeah, I think we're going to just fight and kill them. Like, I can't imagine us losing a fight at this point, um, assuming that I don't get doomed. <laughs> yeah, I was going to mention that. Tornado range is just absurd. Yeah. It looks like X. Oh, nice chap there. there. There he goes. Uh, Meteor is just gonna. Yeah, if you look at him, that just killed half of his health. Uh, Type Soul is just gonna let us go to work. He's gonna go down with Cold Snap. Um, I threw a nice ball down. Four step up. I did buy another Django charge at this point. I can pick him off with the dagger, I should. Looks like you don't go for Oh no, I wanted, to, I wanted to go for the Weaver, but we couldn't get him. Makes sense. Radiant and now you're, you're keeping right to top lane, I assume, to push? Yep. We want to do top because the tower is down, right? So. Yeah. And Doom was actually uh, on cooldown that, that team fight. That's why I went so well for you guys. Or one reason. Okay. I might hit a stun strike here. Nope, he's just going to get the guy to axe. Okay. <laughs> and deny the tower. <laughs> There we go. All right. Radiance bottom tower has been denied. So yeah, you're sitting on 4200 here. Are you looking to pick up the mules all in one piece and save them? I'm saving for a buyback. Is the most important item at this point. That makes sense. I mean, for a team fight, a Gwinsu, which is 6k, is what like three, four seconds to disable. Three and a half seconds. Yes. Whereas if you die immediately, get doomed. Um. What I would actually do if I got doomed at this point in a team fight is just stand in the middle of a fight, try to die as fast as I could, so I can, as long as I could buy back in TPN, and then just buy back in TPN and then win the fight. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, looks like they're posturing to defend this Rex. Furion is dead for another 50 seconds. Yeah, they can't. They can't defend this. It's impossible. Um, he does have buyback. Okay, so he'll buy back then. Um, I still think that it shouldn't. 
Again, I'm thinking of how it should go if Invoker is playing well, okay. like really well. Okay. But it's it's decent play right now. So, anyway, we're gonna have one more fight. Uh, Rax is gonna go down the media later, and then here's where the spells come out. Meteor is gonna go in the middle of everything. It's gonna deal a ton of damage, and then you see them deafening blasts into the tornado to make them stand there for longer. Uh, Ice wall to make them able to move up. Cold snap on King to make them go slower. I alacrity myself, or I alacrity Windrunner so she can auto attack better. Four staff up to him. Tornado so that the rest of the team can catch up, and I think that's my entire arsenal. And then I beat his whatever. Yeah, but really, can the executive team fight each other doom on ass? That was, yeah. I think that was a better team fight. And then Spirits are out for the end game. Yeah. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Right. Radiant's bottom barrel. Well, I think that's really well played. Um, who else would you recommend checking replays at if I wanted to take a look at some high level invoker play? Um, so, most of the absurdly good invokers are all Chinese, and they're not playing Dota 2. So if you really want to go into Dota 1, uh, I won't really tell you how to do it, it's kind of complicated, but learn how to watch Dota 1 games, and then watch this guy, Ferrari 430, who is stupid good invoker. You can also watch some replays of Yafits, who's also known as uh, Perfect as Shit, or PIS, he's the guy who Shadow from got named after because he was so good at him. Um, he doesn't play anymore, but there are still some pub replays that he does of Invoker that are just stupid good. Okay. Um, oh, for Dendi? Any comments on Dendi's play? Uh, I catch a lot of flack because I think Dendi is very, a very good player. He doesn't happen to be an amazing Invoker. Um, I would watch Link if you want to watch an Invoker player, because I think Link is really good. And, yeah, I think he's a member of SK here. Yeah, SK Link Link or Link. I never remember if it's the Link's one, but he's really good too. I think, um, Pajkat, I think he's playing for EG right now. Or Pajkat is what it looks like. P-A-J-K-A-T-T -T was one of the first really good European invokers who kind of showed everybody how to play him, so... Okay. He's another one to check out. I don't... Again, I don't have any replays of pro invokers, though, so that's why... We're watching me so I can like criticize my own mistakes and uh, not seem pretentious because I don't have replays of the pros that aren't Dota 1, so. Right, and a lot of players are not very familiar with Dota 1 if they're stepping into the scene new, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, um, so let me talk about real quick how you beat Invoker um, just while we're waiting for the game to end. Please. You can beat him. Go on? No, please, let's go. Oh, okay. You can beat him with early pushing, um, huge pressure in lane, and um, Doom with Blink Dagger is really good against him. You rarely see them do it, but Doom should get a Blink against an Invoker who knows how to beat the uh, Doom. Silencer is not so good against him because Last Word isn't big enough, like a big enough AoE. Um, Pugna is fairly good against him because of the, uh, the ward, ward yes. if you hide it well. yeah. But what you do in that situation is you get the Forge Spirits up and you just have them go on the ward. Problem solved. Okay, um, would um, you ever consider a BKB on Invoker? Say they had something like a Bloodseeker or... Yes, absolutely. And I would, um, BKB is... Basically, you, you either go for positioning and hope you're good enough to get away with it, which in this game it wasn't, or you can go for the BKB, which is just problem solved. Right, but... BKB is pretty good on Invoker. Um, I would never really rush it unless you were doing a really weird, um... Auto attacky WE build in which you went like Dominator BKB or something, but. Okay. Yeah, and obviously it doesn't make sense in this game against Doombringer because Doom goes through BKB. Yeah. And just correct me if I'm wrong, Invoker is an. Oh, oh, Ice Wall on two heroes, I think. And this is just gonna end the game. When Ice Wall hits that many people, it just doesn't work. I get Doom, but I don't care at this point. Yeah. He has a fairly good right click. But um this hero was not in haunt, right? No, he was not. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Is under attack. So okay. he's he's very new. Um, so again, watch the replays of pro players playing him. Yeah, see that meteor definitely blast? Yes, that did that pretty much hundred to zero at him. So, and again, happy uh, happy invoker. Alright, um, for watching guys, this is Decency. Um, here is Shred Kid. This is Shred Kid. And, and, thanks, this is